Good morning, I'm Lynn, and welcome to another day at Utopia Farms. And as you can hear, we're getting right to it. So come on, let's get started. As you can see, we got the rain yesterday. They're still forecasting rain for tomorrow, I think. So hopefully we get more. Hi, buddy. Hi. Hi, Tommy. Are you guys all hungry? I bet you are. I bet you are. You've got to be starving. Oh, my goodness. Scotty, are you going to come in for yours, too? Come on in. There we go. You're a clever kitty cat. It's okay. The others aren't going to come. That's how Scotty gets in to get his food. Hi, Casanova. How you doing? Oh, you're such a silly boy. Yeah, you are. That's nice. I kick this in for them. When I say kick in, what I do is I walk in the manger here and you see how some of them are having to reach quite a bit because they've eaten the edges, but they are trying to get that center core there. So I literally just kick it over so that everyone can reach. So you see now everyone's eating. And now the empty spot is in the center of the trough. Yummy, eh, you guys? Really yummy. And likewise, I can see it's happened in this trough, too. So I gotta kick it all in. Oh, you guys, I know, you're hungry. Creep feeding day. Arnie made some more creep feed. We're just handing it out to the lambs. Hi guys. This is the group we're working on selling right now. These are the Suffolk ewe lambs we have left. Not an awful lot now. And we got people supposedly coming. But I gotta tell you, this year has been just the weirdest year. Like most people when they come to get their lambs, they're like hounding me. They want to get here quicker than I can have them ready. And this year it's like everybody's delay, 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 delay. It's uh, just a different, different year. This is what they do. There's plenty of room, but they have to dangle over each other. Daddy and her sister and his niece's nursing there. I couldn't get that too well because my hands were wet and <laughs> the camera wouldn't focus quick enough. It's funny, but today the I'm guessing the video is not going to be super clear because today it's so humid I can't keep my lenses from fogging up. And in the winter I have the problem with my lenses fogging up too because of the cold temperatures and today it's because of the extreme humidity. We got the rain but along with it came heat and humidity. So yeah everybody's panting in the barns. No shearer, no shearer responds to me. Um, it's extremely depressing some days. Hi there, how you doing? But yeah, I don't know. The sheep industry is gonna die if uh, we don't have shearers in this country. Because a lot of the shearers you speak to say they're really busy and uh, that there's enough shearers for the amount of sheep. But when I talk to the sheep owners, 
everyone has the same problem. They cannot get a shearer to stay. And if you got a good shearer, you're extremely lucky. And you gotta treat them like gold. And we've always tried to treat our shearers like gold. And hasn't worked too well for us. But we still try because we want someone to stay and want to be with us. <laughs> But yeah, it's uh, so frustrating. Like, I'm basically in shorts and like as skimpy as I can get to avoid the heat, but these sheep can't avoid the heat. And fans in the coveralls don't work because, I mean, it's like putting a fan outside because the it's all open. Like, our sheep are like outdoor sheep. We can put fans in the main barn, and so far we don't need to put any in the main barn because... It is a darker, colder, like, stone barn, so it's a lot cooler in there. And there's not very many sheep in there at the moment either. So they're lucky that if it does get hot enough, we will put fans up. And in the past, we had fans up for, we would have a fall breeding group. So all those dorsets would have been in there, and for sure we would have had fans up. But uh, luckily, we don't have a fall breeding uh, lambing group this year. And uh, we're extremely happy we made that decision. Hot Lips loves Arnie. Hi, sweetheart. Oh, you gotta be dewormed, honey. Hi, you are a beauty. Hi, you're a beauty. You're a beauty. People forgot why we called her Hot Lips because she's the one with the overshot jaw. A little bit so her lips stick out. But she's such a sweetheart. We're going to keep her as a pet. Hi. <laughs> and because it's an L year, and he said maybe we should call her Lips. And then I thought of Hot Lips Houlihan on MASH, and so that's how she got her name. Okay, today we've come to the cornfield, as Arnie promised, the day after the rain. And this is the field that two days ago was looking kind of tough. And this side was looking better. And just with one rainfall, I think you can tell even on the camera, they're looking a lot better just with that little drink. However, Arnie's brought a stick with him. Arnie's climbing in the cornfield. So he's going to put a stick in. And the ground is still really hard. He can't get the stick in. <laughs> really? Don't hurt its roots. Is it going to stay there? No. And you don't want to damage the roots. Okay. So you can see, look, it's uh, definitely um, getting pretty tall. But we're going to put just to see how quickly corn grows. And you'll see how much moisture we get over the next... Well, some, yeah, well, some, some, I would say some leaves are taller than that. Well, this is a good average, then. Well, if you're going to say how much. It... And right now, I would say, see, I've got tape. Right now, it's, uh, it's more, it's two and a half feet high, roughly. So there's, uh, two and a half feet. Okay. So maybe not quite. But look, honey, I got another genius tool here. 
think I'm just a pretty face, but I got it all figured out. Hurry up, Ernie. Why, are, we in a, are you going somewhere? Yes, then? there's deer fly and it's hot out here. Are you going somewhere? There's deer fly and it's hot out here. But see that leaf? That leaf looks big, uh, taller than you put it. Four feet. You already marked it twice. Five. And oh, oh I actually made a mistake. Yeah, it looks like it. You can see that. Five. M marking off feet on a tape measure is difficult. Why don't you write six on there? Because now you got a million lines. There. I knew I had you here for a reason. But you, but you kind of, I feel like you're cheating a bit with that little ribbon because that ribbon's lower than it actually is. It's taller than that. Well, how, how tall is the corner? Well, look at that. All right, do you, now it's natural, how high is it? Okay, so you go by where it, where it is natural? natural? Okay. Everyone, any, anyway, everyone's a witness. So, I guess, I guess we need to remember the day. Today is June 25th, I believe. Could write that on there. How do you spell June? Just put 06. How do you spell June, huh? 25th. Okay. Is that June? We'll come back in 10 days. I think, I think a week is not good enough. 10 days. Okay. And we'll see what happens in 10 days. Okay. Sounds, sounds exciting. So for all you viewers who <laughs> are really stimulated by corn growth, come check us back in 10 days. And, and, and how far are we from, away from home, hon? Maybe you can find your own way home. Maybe someone will pick you up or something. Um... I think I'm going to get in my truck and leave you here. You can't take gifts back, Lynn. It wasn't a gift, Ernie. It was a loan. I have a message on the gift. Lynn. It was a here loan. We are back in the barley field. The barley hasn't gone to the milk stage yet. But doesn't the barley look nice? Huh? I have to admit the cereal grains are my favorite. Look at how pretty they are. You see that? You see how short the heads are? You think those heads are short? Yeah. And I'm going to take one with us. So we're going to pull one off. Oh, poor thing. It's giving a second head. Oh, let's see. You shouldn't have done that. Yeah. No. I'm going to let's, let's go around the block. I'm going to show you what the two row barley looks like. I want to see what this looks like too. I haven't seen it yet. And why is it too short? The head should be this long. To my thought, it drought conditions. I think it's under stress. Oh. I don't know why it's not focusing on it. But... So you can tell this is barley because it's got beards. The little beards at the top, and as it grows more mature, it will it will bend over, and wheat stays straight. When this when this ripe, it'll be at uh, it'll go like this and bend right over, dry over. This is this is probably still um, a month and a half away yet from, from the combine stage. But it's not even in the milk stage yet. If you press the kernels, they're just swelling now. It'll still probably come a ton of acre easily. I think it looks really good. And we only put half the seed on. Yeah, this is for overseeding. So we got, this is shelter crop for the alfalfa and grasses that are growing underneath. But it looks to me like the rain helped this field too. Okay, now we've driven around the block and have gone over to our, uh, what do you call this, the fall barley. And see, I, we said that the heads start to bend over when it ripens. Look at, feel the weight there. This is the fall barley, way heavier. Now the fall barley seed has already gone into the milk stage. It's already starting to firm up. This, this barley has not gone into the milk stage. You see the difference in the size of the kernels? But this was growing before this was even planted. That's right. So it has the edge. Well, it's got a whole half a year ahead. But it's not a crop, eh? Look at that. Look at all, and they're strong, he says, here. 
I thought this 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 could easily go two ton an acre, maybe two and a half ton an acre in grain. So I'm thinking. There's a bad spot there, but that's still not bad. You can't condemn the whole field for that spot. But you can see it's changing color. The heads are bending over. They're bending over here, you can see it, see? Right here. Occasionally you see a weed popping up, but uh, not very many weeds at all in this field. Yeah. There's one there. See? That hot? Wow. It's scorching hot. You wouldn't believe how hot and humid it is today here. It's awful. Well, but this is the field that had the duck holes. You can't see them now. <laughs> can you smell it? Smell what? That? No. I can. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a barley smell. So it's a straw smell. It smells like bee, a beer? Well, <laughs> what happens with barley is you start to get your uh, rings when it's ripening. And the barley actually starts to become, uh, have a dust on it. Like a mold, a black mold when you get too much rain. Uh, it doesn't affect the animals, but I, I heard the other day in a farm show, if you got too much dust on it, it actually can be poisoned to the animals. Well, this looks pretty clean, like there's no dust on this. But look how those heads are swollen right out. See that? Really swollen out. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm extremely happy with this. And this was poor land. Imagine we had this on good fields. Wheat has no bristles. And this is... There's some wheat. wheat does and some doesn't. Actually, this wheat does have bristles. That's right, it does. If you read the types of wheat, some have bristles and some don't. This definitely does. So this is not our wheat field, but this is our neighbor's wheat field, just to show you what the difference is. Very, very similar. It looks like our young barley, but this is fall, bar fall wheat. So it stands up in the air instead of bending over as it ripens. This is actually a really nice crop. Yeah, we're in the second cut alfalfa field now. Arnie thinks that something might be chewing on the alfalfa. You can see little bite marks on that piece. So there's there's another piece that doesn't have any. So there's lots of this. And I wonder if the beetle's in here. We're wondering if it ha might have a bug. If it does get a bug, what you do, you don't spray it. You just cut it down. And look at how high it's grown. Remember we cut the first cut off? That was all the stuff we wrapped. And from where Arnie's standing, you can see how tall it is on him. Well, if you like this, it's grown up quite a bit. If you go like this, if you feel this, there's the flower right there already. Yeah. So I'm thinking in two, in two weeks, 10 days with this rain, we're going to shave the whole field off. Yeah, and that'll be our second cut. Yeah. And hopefully there is no bug in it, but if we are cutting it off that soon, it will get rid of the bugs anyway. And the third cut, there won't be any bugs left. I'm, I'm scared of that beetle, right? See, people say, why are we tile? Can you see where the tile is? The drainage. See that? See that dark band right there? That's the other one. See behind there? There's another dark band. They're all 45 foot strips and tiles. Drainage. Now this field was only. Uh, you realize this field was only 25, 30 percent of alfalfa, right? Eh? Yeah. If this was 70 percent of alfalfa, this whole field would be like this. Well, it was a bad mistake. It actually. Is Honestly, it looks like way more than 30%. Well, some people say uh, more than 30% of alfalfa is too much to manage with. It's too, it's too aggressive. Okay, now we've headed to another neighbor's field who is growing oats. We just drove by and saw he had oats, so we thought we'd show you the difference between oats. <gasps> Ow, prickles. So oats look totally different. That's why you don't get as much, um, vol like as many grains from oats. Because see how they they grow like a little dangly thing? You get about the same grain. You know what's wrong with oats? There's no weight to it. It doesn't weigh up. Right. So it's way lighter in the, in the bushel weight. The reason why you don't grow oats is if you have a dry summer, 
oats has a very poor root system and the seed becomes light, which is called horse feed. Which barley has a better root system, can tolerate drought conditions better than oats. But this will all turn golden yellow too, but uh, it's just the heads that look different. So barley, when it ripens, the head um, bends over like a flag, wheat stands up straight, and oats are all little separate ones like little bells. And oats has a stiffer straw, so on bad weather, it doesn't break down as easy. Which barley can have those big heavy heads, and you have a thunderstorm. And it'll actually snap off the stalk and it'll start to lodge. Remember someone told me about lodging last year? And in my opinion, oat straw is the nicest. It's the most yellow. Yeah. Less dust than this. It's really, really golden yellow. It looks like gold. I mean, barley and wheat are all right. Barley's second nicest. Wheat is the worst straw, I find. It's just a personal wheat, thing. Wheat's too coarse. Barley's a little dusty. And old straw is what horse farmers prefer, I think, because it's uh, not dusty, it's clean. It's what, it's what I prefer to. That's right, it's what you said. It's not that I'm correcting you, Lynn. I'm just helping you. But I'm just saying, it's, it's what not, it's, I prefer. It's, it's just really beautiful straw. It's not a competition but thing. But most people are not growing it for straw. Most people are trying to grow varieties that have really short stalks because they don't want to deal with the straw at all. Because straw is basically a waste product unless you're a person with animals who's using it as bedding and animals are kind of on the way out. It's more about crops these days, isn't it? Quaker oatmeal. Yep, it's nutritious. The problem, it may not produce as much, but it definitely is nutritious. The problem with this is it doesn't get enough water. These heads are gonna be light. So to explain it better is, you see this little oats here? It has a lot of uh, holes on it, like uh, fi um, a lot of um, little shells, shells on the outside. On so there's a lot more fiber co fiber content content in this. Barley has less holes, and and uh, wheat has no hole at all. It's just a, a it's seed. Just seed. So this has lots of fiber, healthy for you. Okay, I'm burning up, hon. Too hot. There, we got a sample of each. Okay, so put them in a row so we can see. So this one is the fall barley because it's falling over. Don't break it. But it's tipping over already. This is the spring barley. This is the fall, fall wheat. wheat. And this is the oats. Spring oats. I don't think there's such a thing as uh, fall, fall oats. oats. I don't no, think so. I, have, I don't think so either. But all of these at harvest time are going to be a golden color. So another day has come to a close. I hope you enjoyed your time with us. If you did, please be sure to give us a like and tell your friends about us. And until next time, bye for now.